Yo, what up? It's your boy, Mr. E, and today we're going to learn about multiplying decimals. And to help us with learning about multiplying decimals, I brought in a special guest, Mr. Kanye West. He may have not come even close to winning the presidential election, but he can definitely help us with multiplying decimals. A couple of years ago, Kanye West would randomly scream the word scoop in a lot of his songs. And when we multiply with decimals, we use the word scoop a lot. So what we're going to do today is we're going to have a counter in the bottom left corner seeing how many times I say the word scoop. Kanye's head will appear and him actually saying the word scoop will happen at that time. I wonder how many times we're going to see Kanye's head pop up and him say the word scoop. I hope you enjoy. Let's get on with the video. So we have an equation here at the bottom. It says 4 and 3 tenths times 5 equals Q. Our first step is we're going to stack the numbers. Do not worry about lining up the decimals. And I personally like to put the number with the most digits on the top. So 4 and 3 tenths has the most digits, so we're going to put that at the top. And 5 is going to go at the bottom. This is going to really help us with multiplying later so that we don't have to do more steps. So I know typically we put the number with the greatest value on the top, but in this case we're going to put the number with the most digits. And again, don't worry about stacking up the decimals. I know we do that when we add and subtract decimals, but you do not have to do that for multiplying decimals, and you're going to see why in a second. If you choose to line up decimals, like put a decimal there, put a zero behind there, you'll get the same answer. You're just going to have to do a lot more work. And you know Mr. E is all about not doing as much work. So step two, we're going to ignore the decimal. It's going to get on out of here. See you later. So we ignored that decimal. It's like we're multiplying 43 and 5 together. Now we're just going to multiply like normal. 5 times 3 would give us 15. 5 times 4 would give us 20 plus 1 would give me 21. So 215 would be our answer. Now we're going to scoop and move your decimal places. However many numbers are behind the decimal is how many scoops you have to make. So we need that scoop or that, just want to say the word scoop. We need to bring that decimal back in here. And we're going to count how many numbers are behind the decimal. In this case, we only have one number behind the decimal, so we're going to only scoop once. So we put a decimal behind the five, because that doesn't change the value of this whole number, and we're gonna scoop over just once to give us 21 and 5 tenths. Now, if we were multiplying two decimals together, so if like we had five and one tenth or five and three tenths, we would count the decimals behind both the numbers. So we do need to be careful about that. And that's about it. The last step would be to check with inverse operations. We haven't quite learned how to divide with decimals yet, and it gets a little tricky, so I don't want us to have to worry about that. But you know Mr. E is all about checking your answer and making sure that you got a good answer. But I can guarantee that 21 and 5 tenths is a good answer and that we did everything that we were supposed to do. So multiplying with decimals is a lot like the standard algorithm. We're just going to add that little scoop element at the end. Let's go ahead and practice a few problems together. So let's try this first problem. We have r equals 8 and 6 tenths times 7. 8 and 6 tenths has the most digits, so we're going to stack that number on top. We'll put the 7 at the bottom. Remember, we don't have to line up the decimals when we multiply with decimals. That's what makes it a little easier. Now we're going to ignore the decimal and multiply like normal. 7 times 6 would give us 42. 7 times 8 would give us 56, plus 4 would give us 60. Now we're going to check how many numbers are behind the decimal. Looks like we only have one number behind the decimal, so we're going to scoop just once. So we bring the decimal over here, and we got 60 and 2 tenths. Let's try the next problem. We have 9 times 1 and 22 hundredths equals K. Now this number has two numbers behind the decimal, but that doesn't change what we're going to do. We're just going to have to scoop twice, but we'll see that in just a second. So 1 and 22 hundredths has the most digits, so that's going to go on the top. Then we pick the 9 on the bottom. 9 times 2 would give us 18. 9 times 2 again would get us 18, plus 1 would get us 19. We're ignoring that decimal, so we're going to go 9 times 1 equals 9, plus 1 equals 10. Now we're going to count how many numbers are behind the decimal. I see that there are two numbers behind the decimal, so we're going to scoop twice. So scoop, scoop and we've got 10 and 98 hundredths. Let's move on to this last problem. n equals 4 and 5 tenths times 3 and 2 tenths. Now something I'm noticing with this problem is both of our numbers are decimals. 
So we're going to actually going to have to take a look at both numbers to see how many numbers are behind the decimal. Let's try it. So they have the same amount of digits. They both have two digits. So it doesn't really matter which one we put on the top or which one we put on the bottom. I'm going to put the number with the most value on the top just because that's how I've always done it and the number with the least value at the bottom. And then we're just going to multiply like normal. Ignore that decimal. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9. Now we're going to move on to the second step of multiplication. We're going to add that placeholder 0. It is also good to erase any stray marks. I'm just going to kind of cross this guy out. Okay. And then we move on to multiplying in the tens place. 3 times 5 would get us 15. And 3 times 4 would be 12 plus 1 would give us 13. We add these two numbers together, and that would give us 1,440. Now we're going to check how many numbers are behind the decimal. But this time we've got to check both numbers since they're both decimals. So we have this number behind the decimal and this number behind the decimal, which means we're going to scoop twice. So we bring the decimal place over here, and we go scoop, scoop, to get us 14 and 40 hundredths. So it looks like we've got a good answer and we were able to multiply decimals by using scoop. I wonder how many times I said the word scoop today. If I had to estimate, I would say 24. You were close. Let's see if I was right, but I don't know. I might have not even been close. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully this video was helpful to help you with multiplying with decimals. And I hope that you get to practice multiplying decimals so that you can get a hundo on your next test. We love you guys, we miss you, and I'll see you later, bye.